Well, good morning to everybody. Uh, this is uh, Sugar Grove United Methodist Church with George Dello, and uh, we're going to be doing our uh, Sunday morning service here online this morning. We want to welcome everybody uh, uh, coming on by phone and by uh, Facebook Live. And uh, we just greet you this morning in the name of the Lord. Uh, we're thankful to have you and um, uh, looking to God as we continue uh, to uh, move forth in this uh, uh, coronavirus and all the things that it's doing. And um, there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. We're, we're hearing a, a lot of states are looking to open back up uh, with some restrictions, hopefully uh, after the uh, 1st of May. And uh, so we're just praying and believing that uh, uh, we can get back into, uh, uh, into church and uh, uh, get connected again. Uh, just a few uh, announcements again this morning. Um, Wednesday night, we're continuing our Bible study on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, each Friday night at 7, we're doing our uh, Friday night prayer meeting and uh, just continuing to lift everything up to God and to look to Him uh, for all things. Uh, just a reminder also to uh, continue to send in your tithes and offerings either by mail or you can use our church website at sugargroveumctoronto.org. And also next Sunday, we want to remember uh, to bring in our missions offerings. We want to continue uh, to keep up with that and continue to help those in need. Uh, a lot of nations are going through things that uh, make it look pretty easy for us. Uh, one of the uh, things in our heart has been Haiti, uh, working down there for numbers of years, and uh, now they're getting hit with this virus on top of... Uh, uh, everything else they've been dealing with. So they were already in crisis. They were already dealing with uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, political unrest, uh, food shortages, um, uh, immobility because of uh, violence and things going on down there and places being closed. And now on top of that, they have this coronavirus. And uh, I just ask that we all be praying for them. It's very difficult for them to, uh, to uh, uh, have to, to use uh, safe distancing because uh, in Haiti, you have families living in, in these little block homes. You can have two, three generations of people, uh, six, eight, ten people living in one home, uh, having to share beds, taking turns to, to sleep and share beds. And so it's very difficult for them to uh, practice uh, uh, keeping apart from each other and then on top of that we're moving into the rainy season uh, when the uh, farmers plant their crops and because they don't have the machinery we have here in the U.S. they do it by hand and so farmers will get together uh, at each other's field and they have to uh, get really close to each other as they go through that field and, and plant the seeds and uh, do the uh, uh, plowing by hand with hoes and pickaxes and things like that. So uh, in order to plant their fields, they, they, it's very difficult for them to be apart as well. And then on top of that, uh, one of the drugs that uh, we find being used in the U.S. now is uh, uh, this chlorinique, uh, which they found helps uh, lessen the issues with this virus. Well, down there, they, they have uh, a lot of malaria, especially in this rainy season coming up. And that's the drug that they use for malaria. So uh, people are uh, uh, buying up that stuff for this virus, and that's going to leave a lot of people a uh, 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 shortage of this drug for malaria that's going to be popping up. So we can't even imagine the issues that they're going through down there. And on top of that, we have to understand that in places like Haiti, where so many people are living in poverty, they live one day at a time. In, in other words, they, they do everything they can just to, to get enough food for today. So to tell people, well, you need to stay in your home to keep people from getting this virus, they can't do that. They can't 
they can't uh, uh, go without food for a week. Uh, they, they, that's the way they live from day to day. So they need to be able to get out and find a way to get food for each day. So uh, let's be praying for them and uh, understand there's a lot of nations like that, uh, totally unlike it, it is here in the U.S. And uh, not to belittle you know, the things we're going through, there are a lot of people suffering in this nation, but it's nothing compared to uh, these other nations that were already suffering uh, from hunger and suffering from famines and uh, various issues going on. And then to put this on top of that uh, just uh, it, it increases everything. So uh, we need to, again, remember our brothers and sisters in Christ and all these other nations and be lifting them up and praying for them. Uh, they truly need to depend upon God uh, in these nations. And so uh, we want to do that. Uh, as we get started this morning, again, I want to welcome those that are coming online. Uh, good morning to Terry and Tammy and Cindy. And uh, 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 I don't really understand how Facebook works, but sometimes names pop up. Some people come on and their names don't pop up. I guess it depends on, on uh, whether you make comments or whatever. But uh, we just welcome everybody this morning as we uh, continue to have church. Uh, we have to remember church is not a building. Church is people. So wherever we are, we are the church. And uh, praise God, he is an omnipresent God. He is everywhere with everyone at all times. And so uh, when the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is with us. Well, he is with each one of us this morning. And, and we can thank God for that. And uh, uh, praise him uh, because uh, uh, right where we are, God is with us and we are all united uh, through the body of Christ. The Bible tells us we are one in him. Uh, when we're united to Christ, we're united to each other. And so we praise God for that. And I want to pray uh, this morning as we begin. Uh, I want to read Psalms chapter 33, verse 18 to 22 as we get started and have a word of prayer. And uh, this is just a, uh, a really good psalm for all of us. And uh, I highly recommend that all of you spend time every day reading uh, 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 some psalms and a proverb each day because they're so filled with wisdom. They're so filled with encouragement. Uh, the, the psalms are written from people. Uh, expressing their own situations and, and uh, going to God because of the things they were going through. And so we can really identify with the psalmist and a lot of what they go through and uh, apply it to our own lives and find that same encouragement uh, in God. So he says in Psalms 33, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. Father, we just thank you this morning that you are an ever-present God, not just in trouble, but at all times. And we thank you, O oh God, that your eye is upon your people, those who fear you, those who hope in your mercy. Your eye is upon us at all times. You are always watching over us. You are always keeping us. You are always with us. You are always moving on behalf of your people, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you, O oh God, that you deliver our soul from death, that you, you keep us alive even in famine. Lord, you are a God that cares for your people, a God of compassion, of mercy, and love. And so, Lord, as we gather here together, we just recognize you, we acknowledge you, and we glorify you, Lord God. We want to give you praise and honor and glory because of who you are and because of who you have made us, your own special children. We are the apple of your eye. Lord, you care for us and you help us, Lord, even in times of need. And so, Lord, we declare to you that you are our help and our shield. We look to you, Lord, in the midst of everything going on in this earth. We keep our eyes fixed on you, and we thank you, O oh God, that you are with us to do everything we need 
and to take care of your people. And so we rejoice in you, Lord. We, we trust in your holy name. And we continue to pray, O oh God, that your mercy be upon your people, that you uh, uh, keep us in that place of hope and confidence in you, that you protect us from this virus, that you heal those that are sick, that you deliver those that are oppressed, that you continue moving in this earth, O oh God, to seek and save that which is lost, to, 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 to move upon the hearts and minds of people everywhere, Lord God, that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. And Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. We thank you that you meet all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We thank you, O God, that you are a sovereign and mighty God, that you see everything going upon this earth. And Lord, you are moving in the midst of all things to bring about your will and purpose to help people. And Lord, to, to meet and supply needs, to bring forth resources, Lord. And, and Lord, to, to put forth your hand against this virus and every sickness and disease. And Lord, we just thank you today uh, that you are with us to bless us, to touch us, to minister to us, to continue to work in us, uh, to bring about your kingdom in our lives, to change us daily into the image of Christ. And Lord, just to, to, to do all things uh, 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 to meet our every need. And Lord God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you send to be with us, to, to lead us and guide us in all truth, to open the word to our understanding that your Holy Spirit continues to uh, uh, teach us and instruct us in your ways, Lord, and bring about that spiritual growth in our lives. And Lord, we just want to commit this time into your hands, that your will be done, that your kingdom come in us and through us, that, that Lord God, your will bring forth that which you have ordained for this day as you minister to us and receive our ministry as we worship you, Lord, as we give you all glory and honor and praise as we again acknowledge you that you are our God, we are your people, and Lord, we just bless you and thank you for your goodness in the land of a living. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. Uh, I want to take a moment also this morning, and we do want to do that. We want to give God worship this morning. Uh, I want to worship him this morning from Psalms chapter 98. And... Uh, uh, this is, again, one of those psalms that just exhorts us and that reveals to us how God's people worship Him and how we are to worship Him and to give Him praise and give Him honor for who He is, uh, most uh, uh, importantly. Uh, just because of who He is, we worship Him. Because of who He is, we praise Him, we glorify Him because He's worthy. He's worthy because he is the creator, he's, he's God, he's the almighty king, he's, he's everything. And so we worship him for that, but we also worship him because, again, he is a God, a personal God, a, a God that meets our needs, a God that ministers to us. And so we thank him for everything he does, uh, that he's a good God. There's no evil, no sin, no darkness in him. Everything he does is perfect. Everything he does is out of his love, his compassion, his mercy. So we praise him and worship him for that. And so in Psalms 98, he says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. We, we can thank God that he's, he's made known his salvation. He's sent Jesus Christ to make him known, to make known that God is a saving God. He has sent Jesus to make known this glorious gospel, the salvation of God, to restore us to himself. And so we praise him for that. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Break forth in song, rejoice, and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp, and the sound of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Hallelujah. Let the sea roar in all its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the peoples with equities. Let's just take a moment right now and right where you are, you can praise God. You can give God honor and glory. You can thank God. Thank God for something 
He's worthy to be praised. We should thank him. Thank him you're alive. Thank him you've been able to get out of bed this morning. Thank God that you're not hungry. Thank God that that uh, you have a mouth that can praise him. You have hands that can that can move. You can you you can see. You can read the word of God. You can you can open your mouth and give him praise. You can. Uh, just rejoice over something this morning. Thank God we don't have that virus. Thank God he's meeting our needs. We have daily bread. Thank God that he is uh, just a wonderful saving God. Thank him for your salvation. Thank you, O oh God, for your wondrous works. Thank you, Lord, that uh, regardless of what's going on this earth, you are still on your throne. You are the sovereign God. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are saving people. You are healing people. Lord God, you're working miracles in this earth. You are providing, uh, Lord, for those that don't have. Lord, you are feeding. You are opening up your hands to all of creation, Lord to meet the needs of everything in this earth, Lord. You, you feed the animals, Lord. You you feed your people, O oh God. Lord, your seed are not found begging bread because you're a faithful God. Lord, you're just a God of glory. You put joy in our hearts, Lord. You, you give us reason to rejoice, Lord, even in the midst of, of trials, Lord. You are an ever-present help in trouble. So, Lord, this morning, we just want to worship you. We want to tell you, Lord, we just appreciate, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, the land of living. We thank you for your word and for your spirit. We thank you for your abundant grace you pour upon us every day, Lord. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for your faithfulness to keep us through the night, your loving kindness through the day. We thank you, oh, God, you forgive all our sins and uh, forgive uh, all our sins and heal all of our diseases, that by his stripes we are healed. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us from all sin. We thank you, Jesus, that you gave your life, you sacrificed yourself to take our sins, our sickness upon your body, upon that cross. We thank you, Lord, for all your wondrous works. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that you're just a wonderful and holy God. And we just want to praise you. We want to bless you. We want to thank you. We want to glorify your holy name. And we love you. And we appreciate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Well, we also want to take time this morning to uh, lift up the needs of, of peoples, of individuals. And... Uh, uh, as we are, as I want to, I want to share a couple uh, 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 scriptures about this. And as I'm doing, if you're online, if you'd like uh, to share a prayer request, if you would just type that in, and uh, we will lift those up. But uh, uh, we need to understand that uh, based on the Word of God and what it reveals about God's will for us, God's purpose, God's power. Uh, it's only reasonable that we believe, we, we need to know and believe that, that, that God is interested in us, not just spiritually, but God is interested in us physically, our human bodies, uh, that, that we are born uh, uh, again children of God. We are the apple of his eye. He's not just concerned about our, our spiritual life. He's concerned about our physical life. He's, he's concerned about our needs. He's concerned uh, about our physical health, and we need to understand that. We, we don't need to persuade God to take interest in our physical needs. G God is, has been doing this since the time of creation. God is the one uh, who is the source of everything, I including everything that we have. It, it comes from the hand of God, the, uh, the finances we have, the, the food we have. Everything comes from the hand of God. If God didn't bless the earth, it would not produce the crops that we need to eat. We need to understand that. God uh, uh, has been concerned about the needs of his people uh, for all time. And so uh, God's promises to his children have always far exceeded our faith to receive them. Let me say that again. God's promises to his children have always far exceeded our faith to receive them. Uh, God makes it readily available. We just need uh, to use our faith to receive the things that God has for us, whether it be to meet our physical needs, our financial needs, our, our, our uh, whatever kind of need we may have. Uh, God wants to meet our needs 
And so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 19 and 20, listen to what Paul says. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In other words, Paul's saying, our body belongs to God, and we're to glorify him in this body. Well, that means just as much that one way we glorify God is by believing him for healing, believing him to meet our needs. That brings glory to God. When, when we give testimony that God has met our needs or God has healed us or God has worked a miracle on our behalf, do you know that give, that brings glory to God? That when we give testimonies, it, it causes people to praise God on, on our behalf? It, and also, it brings glory to God because it helps people to believe in God? So, so again, God wants to meet our needs because it brings glory to him. In, in, in uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, look what Jesus said about his, his ministry, about his calling, why he came. Listen to what he says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, he, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus came. This was his ministry. This was his purpose of coming. Again, not just spiritually, but physically as well. So we can go to God with confidence. We can go to God with faith, believing that God cares about us physically. God cares about our needs. God cares about us being in captivity. God cares about us being blind. God cares about us, uh, uh, our health and, and our physical needs. And, and so we have confidence we go before God. And so we want to lift up these needs this morning. I want to share a few that, that uh, have been brought to us. And uh, uh, Pat Matthews, we need to pray for her. She's in the hospital having a stroke, uh, had a stroke. We need to lift her up and believe God to touch her. Uh, Johnny Rice uh, has the virus, this coronavirus. We want to pray for him to be healed and also the protection of his family. Uh, that they will not get this virus. We want to lift up uh, Shirley K. Uh, this uh, 20, April 23rd, this week, uh, she's going to be having uh, surgery for cancer. We want to continue to pray for her. Uh, also, uh, the Wayne Fumer family, we want to lift them up uh, and pray for them. Uh, also, uh, Brandon, uh, he is actually works with uh, 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 patients with CO, uh, this, this coronavirus, COVID-19. We want to lift him up that God would surround him and protect him and all, all of those working in the medical field and nursing homes and hospitals, doctor's offices. We want to lift them up and pray that God will be with them. And again, uh, we want to pray for Haiti and other nations that are uh, in dire condition already and then having to deal with this coronavirus on top of the problems they already have. So let's, let's agree together. The Bible tells us where two or three agree as touching anything, that God would do it. Can we, can we agree together this morning? Can we just put our faith together as we lift up these needs and believe God to touch uh, his people and to do what he has promised to do? Uh, that he is our healer and he wants to heal us. He wants to set us free. He wants to uh, uh, deliver us. Uh, he wants to help us. He wants to open his hands to us and supply our needs. Uh, as we read in, 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 in Psalms in the beginning, uh, he wants to deliver our souls from death. He wants to keep us alive in times of famine. Uh, he, he wants to help us and be with us, and, and give us joy in the midst of these things. And, and I like what he says in Isaiah. He says, when the wicked hunger, God's people will be fed. When the wicked thirst, God's people will be satisfied. And even when the wicked mourn, he says, God's people will rejoice because we have a God that is able 
to do all things and to meet all needs. So let's pray together right now and put our faith together where one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. And, and, and when we agree together, God will meet our needs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to come before you right now because of who you are. And you, you, you proclaim yourself uh, uh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. You are not just our healer, but you declaim, proclaim yourself to be Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. You are our good shepherd. You are our righteousness. You are an ever-present help in trouble. Lord, you declare yourself to be everything to everybody. Whatever our need is, Lord, you are the answer. So, Lord, we just look to you. And, Lord, we just, we just present your word before you that by his stripes we are healed. As we lift these up before you, O oh God, Pat, Johnny, Shirley, uh, the, the, the Falmer family, Brandon, Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that you are the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha, that, that Jesus Christ took our sickness and disease upon his body, upon the cross of Calvary. He bore our sickness that we would not have to bear it. And so we thank you, Father, that you release your healing touch right now on these and all of those, Lord, in the sound of my voice, that are suffering from any kind of sickness or disease. We thank you, O oh God, you forgive all our, our sins and heal all of our diseases. Lord, we, we send forth your word right now. We release miracles of healing and deliverance right now upon the bodies and minds of your people, that by his strife we are healed. We speak life into their bodies and minds in Jesus' name. We, we, tell, we command their bodies to come into agreement with the word of God to be healed in Jesus' name. That, Lord, you deliver us from this virus. That, Lord, you deliver us from cancer. Lord, that you heal uh, a kidney disease, heart disease. Lord, you heal mental illness in the name of Jesus Christ. That, Lord God, you put a covering around those, Lord, that are working among these diseases, that it not touch them, that not have any effect upon them, O oh God, that you cover them with your blood and protect them, Lord, from every sickness in Jesus' name. Lord, you said in your word that your angels have charge over us, that, Lord, no, no, no pestilence will come near our dwellings. And, Lord, we look to you to cover your people, to protect us from every sickness, disease, Lord God, and we thank you for the weapons of warfare we, you have given unto us. Lord, we cast down every spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, death, and destruction. We take authority over these in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood of the Lamb. That they have no effect upon your people, Lord God. And that the, the, this curse of sickness be broken over the bodies and minds of your people right now. For you have redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us that we might be free. Jesus came to set the captives free from every curse. Lord God, not just sickness, disease, the curse of poverty, the curse of lack, the curse of need, in Jesus' name. Lord, we declare this truth, that your word is true. And Lord God, as we agree together, we thank you that you move on behalf of our prayers Lord, we lift up Haiti. We pray, O oh God, for supernatural manifestation of your presence and power in that nation against sickness, against disease, against poverty, against hunger and thirst, Lord, against all of these things, Lord, that have come upon that earth, that nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak life. We speak healing. Lord, we speak restoration. Lord God, that you would bring peace to that nation, that you would restore, Lord, righteousness and justice in that nation, that, Lord, you would supernaturally meet the needs of those people in Jesus' name, that, Lord, your seed not be found begging bread, that your people have no lack in any area in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we pray that same provision over this nation and all the nations of the earth, O oh God, that are suffering because of economic collapse, because of lost jobs. We thank you, Lord, that you meet every need according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus, that you release finances and resources. Lord, that all peoples would have the basic necessity of life in this hour, that your people have sufficient food and clean water, shelter and clothing, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O God, for your mercy, for your grace poured out in this hour. We thank you, O God, that you meet all the needs of all peoples everywhere. 
that you are a gracious and merciful God, that, Lord, there is nothing too hard for you. You are the God of all flesh. And so we call upon your name, O God, and we look to you, the great creator and provider of all things. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. We thank you, O God. And, Lord, in the midst of all it, of all of these things, we thank you that you continue to save, to heal, to deliver, to add daily to the church as you seek and save that which is lost, as you reveal this great salvation, this righteousness of God, this gospel of Jesus Christ to peoples around the world, O God, and you convict them and draw them and reveal Christ to them that all would be saved, that none would perish. We thank you for it, O God. And we want to just give you glory and praise and honor for everything you do, Lord, for every miracle, every healing, every provision, everything you do, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I want to share a word with you this morning, uh, which I think is, is very uh, uh, relevant to the times that we're in and uh, things that we really need to focus on uh, in this hour. And it has to do with uh, intimacy with God. Intimacy with God. In Revelation chapter 21, uh, verse 1 through 4, uh, this is when pretty much everything is said and done and uh, God restores everything. But I just want you to see uh, where everything is headed, because again, when we understand uh, what the end is, uh, then we understand what we need to be about now. If everything is heading to this one thing, then this is what we need to be focused on. This needs to be a priority uh, in our lives. Now, now look what he says. He showed this to John in Revelation 21. He says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Praise God. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. We've messed it up. We, we, we've messed it up. We've defiled it. We've, we've uh, ruined it in, in so many different ways. Uh, but John says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And also there was no more sea. And then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You see, when God creates a new heaven and a new earth, he's going to bring heaven to earth. His, 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 uh, 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 this new Jerusalem, this place of God's dwelling, is going to come down and sit upon this earth. And he says, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. In other words, John is saying when everything is said and done, God's going to burn up everything old. God's going to remove the old, and God's going to make everything new. There's going to be a brand new heaven, a brand new earth. And in this new heaven, in this new earth, God is going to bring his tabernacle, the place of his dwelling, this new Jerusalem, God's going to bring it down to the earth. And he tells us that, that everything is going to come into completion, and this is what we're going to have. This is what we're going to have. Behold, God is going to be literally with us, present with us, to dwell with us forever and ever, and, and, and he's going to be our God, and we're going to be his people, and God's going to be with us in a real and practical way. We will all see God. We will all be with God in this new heaven, this new earth, in this new tabernacle, this new Jerusalem. We are going to dwell with God forever and ever, and everything's going to be brand new. And he says God's going to wipe away every tear from their eyes. There's going to be no more crying, no more sorrow. He says, there'll be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crime. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. When God removes the old heaven, the old earth, when God takes away the old, everything's going to be gone. All pain, all sickness, all disease, all death, all violence, all anything that can cause sorrow, anything that can cause pain, anything that is wicked, that is evil, that is bad, Everything is going to be gone. 
and everything's going to be brand new. Everything's going to be perfect. I, I mean, can you even imagine no pain, no suffering, no sickness, no death, no sorrow, no crime, nothing evil, nothing wicked, nothing bad. Everything is going to be perfect. Everything's going to be full of love, peace, joy. Everything is going to be wonderful. And it's all because we are going to be with God. We're going to be uh, a literally dwelling with God, in His presence, in His goodness, in His love, everything's going to be perfect. And this is what we need to understand today. Because this is the true end of, of Christianity. This is the end of everything that God has done through Jesus Christ. This is the end. It all comes down to this one thing. It all is fulfilled in this one thing. When everything is said and done, when everything is made new, that which God began in the beginning, that which God began with creation is going to be fulfilled, and it is this, our intimacy with God, our oneness with God, our presence with God. The tabernacle of God is going to be with us. He's going to dwell with us, and we're going to be his people. God himself is going to be with us, and, we're, and he is going to be our God, and we're going to be his children, his people forever. You see, this intimate fellowship with God, is the ultimate purpose of the cross of Calvary. It's the ultimate purpose of everything that God has done in creation for us. It's the ultimate purpose of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It is the ultimate purpose of the giving of the Holy Spirit and everything that Jesus has accomplished for us through his justification, through his sanctification, through his redemption. Everything was to this end to bring us into fellowship with God, into this, into this intimate uh, relationship with our Creator, the one who made us, the one who created us, the one who saved us, was all to this end. Look what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Look what Paul says. For you, us, God's people, you are the temple of the living God. And God had said this, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Paul was quoting from Leviticus all the way back in the, in the beginning of the law, all the way back when God took a people out of the nations to be his own. Paul was quoting that from the very beginning. Why did God go to Abraham? Why did God go to Moses? Why did God go to Israel? Why did God want a people for himself. Well, Paul tells us the whole purpose of wanting a people for the whole, for himself, the whole purpose why God created us in the first place is all wrapped up in this one thing, that God could dwell with us, be in us, be with us, walk among us, have fellowship with us. That's why God created us. The true end of Christianity comes down to this. Micah tells us in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, he said this, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does God require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To walk with God. That's God's purpose. That's everything God did comes down to this one thing. God created us to walk with him, to live with him, to be with him to walk humbly with our God. That's why I say, when we understand, when we get to heaven, when, when, when everything's said and done, when God makes everything brand new, this is what we'll have. God with us, dwelling with us. Every one of us will see God face to face, face to face. Every one of us will be forever with God as his children and him as our God. That's what it's about. Everything in the Old Testament, that was given to Israel by way of the law and the priesthood, the whole sacrificial system that God gave to Israel and the, the covenant that God gave to Israel with his people was all a temporary means of God establishing relationship with his people and pointing to, to this, this foreshadowing the complete fulfillment of God's purpose through his son, Jesus Christ. Everything that God did with Israel 
was a type and a foreshadowing of what God would ultimately fulfill and complete through Jesus Christ to bring us into relationship with him, to bring us into fellowship, into intimacy with God himself. It was all about that. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11, look what he says. Now, if, if perfection, if a perfect fellowship between God and the worshiper had been attainable by the Levitical priesthood, for under the priesthood, under the law, under that old covenant, uh, the people were given the law. Why was it further necessary that there should arise another, a different kind of priest, one after the order of Melchizedek, rather than one appointed after the order and rank of Aaron? You, you see, you have to understand something. It, it was just a, a, a type, a foreshadowing of God's ultimate purpose. God's ultimate purpose was to have intimate fellowship with us. But you see, the law could not produce, produce that ultimate intimacy with God. That's why when they set up that tabernacle, the veil that separated the people from God, the veil that separated even the priests from God, except once a year that they could go into the Holy of Holies, that veil was a constant reminder of this separation between God and uh, and his people, that they could not have that true intimacy with God. They could not be one with God. They could not see God face to face. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19, he says, For the law never made anything perfect, but instead a better hope is introduced through which we now come close to God. God, through Jesus Christ, could came to do what the law could not do to rend that veil, to remove every separation between God and us, which is basically sin. The reason that that veil kept the people apart from God was because they still had sin. They were still sinners. But Jesus Christ came to tear that veil in two through his death upon the cross, whereby he removed the sin that separates from God, and he could fulfill what Paul declared in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 again, that God would dwell in us, that he would bring about the perfect intimacy with him, that God would literally dwell inside of us and be with us in a real and practical way and be able to walk among us in this fellowship of intimacy with him. In the midst of all the birth pangs the world is going through right now with this coronavirus, on top of all the other stuff going on, I mean, I mean tornadoes tearing through countries, earthquakes, and erupting volcanoes, floods and fires, wars and famine, it's imperative that we understand that the supreme purpose of God is and always has been fellowship with him. And because of that, that we do everything in our power to pursue that purpose and to enter into that intimacy with him, to enter into that fellowship. And that's why we've been praying, Psalms chapter 91, that our protection and deliverance in the midst of everything that's going on is based on Psalms 91. What does he call us to in Psalms 91? But to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, that, 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 that our salvation, our, our intimacy, our fellowship with God is rooted in that. Our abiding, our remaining, our living in that close oneness with God. As we stay close to God, as we remain in that abiding place with Him, He promises to protect us, to keep us, to be with us. To even send His angels to be with us, to uphold us. When we find ourselves dealing with different issues... No matter what you're going through in your life, no matter what trials you face, no matter what issues or difficulties come upon you, no matter what happens, our place of safety, our place of peace, our place of victory is in our oneness with God, our abiding place with Christ. When we find ourselves dealing with fear or anxiety or depression or any other feelings of distress, 
It's because we have lost sight of our anchor. We've lost sight of our rock, our refuge, who is God. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, when we move our trust from God to ourselves or, or to anything else, we will find ourselves sinking in the midst of the storm, just like we saw with Peter. Peter walked on the water. Jesus, they were out in the storm, and, 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 and Jesus came to them walking in the water. And Peter says, Lord, if that's really you, call me out to you. And Peter began to walk on the water. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, as long as his focus was on Jesus, he walked on the water. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, as soon as, as he set his eyes on the storm, fear began to grip the heart of Peter. And guess what? When fear took over instead of faith, he began to sink beneath the waves. <laughs> Praise God. He lifted him up. Praise God. Jesus was right there. And he saved him out of that, out of the, out of that sea and out of that storm. Isaiah 26, 3, he told us this. You will keep him in perfect peace. God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. In other words, God's promise is that as long as we will keep our hearts and minds stayed upon God, as long as we will keep focused on him, he will keep us in perfect peace no matter what is going on around us, no matter what is happening in our life, no matter what is happening to our nation. It doesn't matter. As long as our minds are stayed upon him, he will keep us in perfect peace. That's why Paul exhorts us in his letter to the, the church in Colossae. He says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, If then, if then, if you are raised with Christ... Have you been raised with Christ? Have you, re have you received the, the salvation of Christ? Have you been raised up with Christ out of sin and into life? Have you been seated with God and the, and with, with Jesus at, at the right hand of, and of God in heavenly places? Have you been raised up with Christ? He says, here's what you need to do. Seek those things which are above where Christ is, seated, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you die, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. As long as you are focused on things above, God's going to keep you in his peace. God's going to be with you. God's going to take you through. God's going to help you. No matter what you're going through, our salvation is our hope, our trust in God. Our life is hidden with Christ in God. We, we are protected. We are kept by God as long as we keep our focus on Him, as long as we look on things above, as long as we stay close to God. In other words, we are kept in a place of safety where nothing can get to us except to go through God. He is the answer to every problem, every fear, every distress, every need. God is our answer. Zephaniah, who was a minor prophet of the Old Testament, he prophesied about the coming of the day of the Lord as a day of wrath. This would be a day of trouble and distress, a day of death of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a time when men's hearts are going to fail them for fear when even the mightiest of men will cry out in panic and distress. But in the midst of all the devastation that's going to come upon this earth, Zephaniah tells us what we need to do to be safe, to be calm, to have peace. Zephaniah tells us the answer. In chapter 2, verse 3, he said this, Seek the Lord inquire for him, inquire of him, require him as the foremost necessity of your life. All you humble of land who have acted in compliance with the revealed will, seek righteousness, seek humility, inquire for them, require them as vital. Why? You may be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. You see, this is what God created us for. God created us for intimacy. God created us for fellowship with him. Look at that, uh, Paul, uh, look what he tells us in Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Look what he tells us. 
And God has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. Why did God create us? So that they should seek the Lord. God created us, every single one of us, from, from every nation. God created every one of us for one purpose, that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, even though he is not far from each one of us. For in him, for in him, for in God, in Christ, we live and move and have our being. It's in God that we live and move and have our being. In other words, our entire being, our life itself, is all found in our abiding in him. That's where we find everything. That's where we find our peace. That's where we find our life. That's where we find our joy. That's where we find our righteousness. That's where we find our healing, our deliverance, our need. Everything is in Him. As we live and move in and, and have our being in Him, as we maintain that intimacy and that fellowship with Him, everything is taken care of. Because God is our life. God is our life. And we are His children. God is our life in every way. Everything to do with real life is found in Him. In Him, we live and move and have our being. Everything that God does in the earth or allows to happen within His creation is to this end. Everything God does is to bring us to Himself in this intimate fellowship. It is the one thing that God wants more than anything else in all of creation. Everything else is secondary. Ministry is secondary. Giving is secondary. Works are secondary. Buildings, whatever it is, they, everything else is secondary to this one thing that God desires above everything else. It is our intimacy with Him. Intimate fellowship is the very expression of God and His church. This is why the two greatest commandments are to this end. What did Jesus tell us in Matthew chapter 22, 36 through 40? Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? What did Jesus tell him? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, Jesus was saying everything is about this one thing, that you love God and you love each other. Fellowship, intimacy. And our love and fellowship with God is reflected to the world through the church, through our love and fellowship with each other is a reflection of this intimacy that God has called every one of us into. That's the picture we see in the Garden of Eden. As God walked in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve, fellowshipping with them, talking with them, communing with them, they dwelt together in this abiding relationship of love. We see this picture with Israel. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 8, when, when God called Israel to himself, look what he says. He says, when I passed by you again and looked upon you, Indeed, your time was a time of love. So I spread my wings over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you, and you became mine. You became mine, saith the Lord God. We see this picture when Israel was unfaithful to God, and the Lord promised a time of restoration. In Hosea chapter 2, verse 16, he says, It shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband and no longer call me my master. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in justice, in loving kindness and mercy. I will betroth you to, to me in faithfulness and you shall know the Lord. In Jeremiah 31.3, the Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. And ultimately, we see this 
picture in the coming of Jesus Christ in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What is that everlasting life? It's our oneness with God. It's our united, our being joined into oneness with him. That's our everlasting life. To know God and to know the one whom he has sent, Jesus Christ. That's what life is. The people of the world and even in many in the church today, they live lives of dissatisfaction, of fear and anxiety and depression and hopelessness. The reason behind all of these things is because they have not entered into fellowship with the source of all life, with the source of peace, with the source of joy. Or as Christians, even as Christians, they have not moved away or they have moved away from that vital intimacy with him. They have gotten out of place. They have gotten out of that abiding place. They have moved out of that place of intimacy, the source of all things, the one who came to give us abundant life. A casual relationship with God cannot produce any more uh, uh, intimacy, intimacy any more than a casual relationship with somebody else. Intimacy is developed through knowing a person, getting to know them in a real and practical way. We can only know God through his word and prayer, through our devotion with him, spending time with him, fellowshipping with him. This is our highest purpose. This is our ultimate end. Everything else we do is secondary to this. And until our primary focus uh, uh, becomes our primary focus, we will continue to go through trials and tribulations to get us to that place. Everything God allows in our life, everything God allows on this earth is to this end, to bring us into that oneness, that intimacy, that fellowship with God that he craves for from each and every one of his created beings. I believe that, that God is using this coronavirus for that purpose. I believe this is a wake-up call to the people around the world. As people are being isolated in their homes, for many, it is a time of reflection. It is a time of examining our priorities. It is a time of, of self-examination in light of everything that's going on. The question is, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing in this isolation? And how will it change us and our relationship to God? Are you using it to draw closer to God? In the midst of a world of chaos, God is calling us back to himself. God is wooing us to return to that place of safety, that place of abiding in him. I like what he tells us in, in, in Hosea chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. He says, O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity. Take away everything that, that divides us. Take away that everything that's between us. And receive us graciously. For we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. As Solomon says in, in the Song of Songs, My beloved spoke, and he said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. He says, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away, O oh, my dove, in the cleft of the rock, in the secret places of the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and your fire is toward him. God is calling us back. God is calling us to return to him. God is calling us back into that intimacy, into that love relationship with him. What is your answer? Will you respond? Will you say, yes, Lord, I, 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 want to, I want to come back into that place of intimacy. Lord, I love you. I desire
have intimacy with you, Lord. W would you tell God that this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, that you so love us, that, that you so care for us, that everything you creation was to make us your own special people. That you would be our God, our Father, our Lord, your everything. And that we would be your own special children. A, a children that love you, that appreciate you, that, 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 that just desire you, that, that long for that fellowship, that intimacy. Lord, everything you did was for this. Because you desire more than anything else to have that you can commune with, that you can talk with you, with, that you can bless, that you can be with, that you can comfort, that you can just have an intimate relationship with. God, I pray that people around the world would embrace your desire and would look to Jesus Christ to bring us into that relationship, that oneness with you through his blood through our repentance, forsaking our ways, Lord, of rejecting you, forsaking our ways of being distant from you, forsaking our ways, O oh God, of being separated from you, that we will repent and then we will put our faith in Jesus Christ and what he did upon the cross of Calvary to restore us, to wash us, to cleanse us, to remove everything that stands between us, to give us a new heart, a new spirit, a new nature, whereby you can dwell in, inside of us. You can come and become one with us. Become our God and we become your people. And that we can worship you and we can love you and we can be intimate with you. We can have that fellowship and communion with you. We can talk to you. We can fellowship with you. We can have devotion with you, Lord God. God, I pray that you will restore your people that have drifted away, that you will restore those that are lost, that you will bring multitudes into this intimate relationship with you, that we will be ready when you make all things new, when you produce a new earth and a new heaven, that we will be a part of that, that you will be our God and we will be your people that we will see you face to face as you dwell with us and we dwell with you for eternity, that we will be in that kingdom where there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more death, no more sickness, no more disease, where everything will be perfect. God, I pray, move upon the hearts and minds of people everywhere around this earth right now and save souls and restore relationships Restore intimacy and fellowship once again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for every soul you touch, every relationship you restore, every person you bring back into that oneness with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I want to make an offer to you also. If you're hearing me today and you have questions, maybe you have questions about God. Maybe you have questions about the about Jesus Christ, about this this salvation. Maybe you have a, a question about the church. Maybe you have needs and need prayer. I want to I want to just let you know. You can contact us. You can use Messenger. You can go to our website at, at sugargroveumctoronto.org, sugargroveumctoronto.org. There's a, there's a contact page on there. You can, you can write down your prayer requests. You can contact us. You can email us. You can use Facebook Messenger. You can contact me by email personally, ggdello at gmail.com. And send me your questions. Send me your prayer requests. We want to pray for you. We want to talk with you. We want to help you in any way we can. And so I am offering our services. You can do that. And uh, feel free to, to, to get in touch with us. And we'll do everything we can to help you in your walk with God in whatever need you may have. We believe in prayer. We'll pray with you. We'll have our church pray with you. So feel free to contact us in any means that you need to, and we'll get back with you right away to help you in whatever way we can. God bless you. And let me pray over you right now. 
the benediction from, Je from Ephesians chapter 1, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to each of you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ, when he raised from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Remember, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we'll be here for Bible study on the gifts of the Spirit. Friday night, we're here at 7 o'clock for prayer, and we'll be back at 9.30 next Sunday morning. We welcome you to be with you to come back and share with us. I pray that you've been blessed today. I pray that God uh, touches you and watches over you, keeps you this week. And uh, also, if you would like us uh, to help us continue with this gospel ministry to reach souls and to help people uh, with this gospel, uh, you can go on, again, our website. There's a donation button, and uh, uh, you can give unto the Lord and help us do that. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being here today. I hope we'll see you next time. God bless you. Uh, have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen.